is love, trust, and respect enough to sustain a long-term healthy relationship in your mind? I think that's a really good question and I think it depends. So I don't think you'll ever find two people that are 100% aligned on values. Everybody is a little bit different, right? So, and you, I think you also want a little bit of diversity of values within the relationship. You want to f- have different standards for, for different things and different opinions about different issues. Uh, it just makes life way more interesting. There's probably a threshold or a breaking point somewhere, right? And it's, you know, one of the examples I've used in a book before is like, if, if somebody is a, 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 a priest and the other person's a stripper, like it doesn't matter how in love they are with each other. It's never going to work. Right. Uh, if, if people have very, very fundamental belief differences, and this kind of comes back to the money thing. I think that's the, the handful of things that seem to come up all the time are differences of beliefs around money, differences of beliefs around, uh, religion, and differences of beliefs, um, kids or around kids and family. Yeah. And I think if you can probably survive not being aligned on one of those, but if you're not aligned on two or all of them, you're probably in trouble. Like you're probably just going to butt heads over and over again. Now, what if someone evolves their values over time, Mm -hmm. you know, and five, 10, 15 years into the relationship. You know what? I actually don't have those beliefs and that lifestyle choice anymore. I want to try something different. Yeah. Do you think the love of the past, the history of the relationship can sustain if it's too much of a conflict around those lifestyle choices or beliefs? I think uh, to a certain extent, first of all, everybody does evolve. Their values do evolve and change. Like I think that's just natural to, to, to people. I think the challenge within relationships is, you know, generally when relationships start, when you commit to somebody, it's because there is some amount of alignment and it's working. But as the years go on, if you start to evolve in two different directions, that can cause a lot of strain. You know, you you often hear married couples that are getting divorced or people who have been together for a long time and and are deciding to get divorced. They say like, you know, we've become two different people or... Or we don't, I don't recognize him or her anymore. Right. Um, and I think that that's a case of like, we were 10 years ago, we were completely aligned and we've both changed and evolved over the years. And my partner's gone this way and I've gone this way. And so now there's just this massive gap and we don't feel like we can bridge it anymore. We don't relate to each other. We don't understand each other. We don't agree on anything anymore. We don't do the same things for fun anymore. Uh, and that's, that's tough. And so I think Part of the trick is to kind of intentionally evolve together is to be very conscious. And this is something that my wife and I try to pay attention to is that if I feel myself changing my mind about something very significant in my life, about my career, my beliefs around family, relationships with friends, it I communicate that with her. I'm like, Hey, I'm starting to move in this direction. Really? Right. So that just as, so she can be aware and, and adapt, you know, and just understand like, okay, that's kind of where he's at. Huh? Is there an example you can share around this in the last few years? Maybe. So the two most significant ones that have happened, uh, have been around. First one was my career. Uh, when we moved to, to LA, I took six months off. I was completely burnt out. Yeah. Um, And it's, I really had this period of just, I'm not having fun anymore. I need to take some time off, figure myself out and really decide like, okay, what's this next phase of my career going to look like? What's the next decade of Mark Manson's career look like? And so I communicated that to her. I'm like, Hey, not going to be speaking, not going to be traveling. I'm going to be at home a lot. Uh, you're probably going to see me on the couch playing video games you know, this is kind of what I'm going through right now. Right. And, and I'm probably going to come out of that different with different priorities, different metrics of how I'm going to make decisions. Um, money might be different, right? Like 
suddenly that huge speaking gig in Dubai that I would have taken a year ago to cash that fat check. Now I'm not going to take it and we're not going to get that fat check. Right. So it's, it's, you, it's important to communicate those things that she understands like, Hey, I'm at this pivot point in my career and I'm probably going to start going a different direction. So just so that she knows and like, isn't shocked. Right. When I don't take the speaking gig and do wow. that. Um, on the other front, this ties in the health thing. She was actually really good. She was a good influence on me. She, so my wife has uh, a couple autoimmune conditions and they really started, she's been aware of them for a long time, but you know, as things happen, as you get older, uh, things you could get away with. You can't be more. Yeah. In your twenties, it's like, you know, and you, you, you gotta pay attention and focus on them. Yeah. You start coming up on 40 and it's just like, they level you. And she was starting to get leveled by them. And so starting right around the, the time of the pandemic, she, she got very, very serious about health. And I, at that time, I had been overweight for a while. My lifestyle was very unhealthy. I was traveling five, six months a year. I was drinking three, four nights a week, um, eating like crap, eating junk food, their desserts all the time. And, and I was aware of that, but it just, you know, on that totem pole of priorities, it was pretty low yeah, on the priority yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but she got super serious about it and, and she really did cause she, she didn't have a choice. Like it was. It was affecting her health. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, she, it was to the point where she could barely function throughout the day wow. if she wasn't being very, very intentional about what she was right. eating. She was right? feeling sick. Yeah. Yeah. And so she started kind of going on this journey and really cleaning up her diet and getting her health in order. And I started kind of becoming the beneficiary of that because she does most of the cooking. So I'm starting to eat healthy a lot more often. We're not going out as much, not drinking as much. And I'm starting to feel better. And I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm like, I'm waking up bright eyed, bushy tail, sure. like, feeling pretty good. Right. Uh, and it, it's, you know, and she and I were in communication about that. And she was very clear, like, this is, I need to make this a top priority in my life. And I'm going to become that person who like doesn't eat dairy, doesn't eat gluten, like doesn't eat sugar. And I was like, oh, this is, oh God, this is going to suck. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is, my life's going to get so boring. Uh -huh. And actually the opposite happened is that it's, I've kind of followed her on that. Um, she's been a very positive influence in that way. And that I started to notice benefits and I said, you know, my health has been pretty terrible the last five years. I'm getting up in my thirties. Like I'm not bouncing back the way I used to 10 years ago. Maybe I just hop on, on this train with her. Right. And see where it goes. Right. And, and that's, that's a big part of what happened. And, um, and so now health has kind of become a big priority in my oh, life. Yeah, man. When you experience a lot of success professionally, reputation, financially, whatever, um, the way the people around you react is very reflective of their relationship to their own wealth, financial success, fame, whatever, right? So uh, 